much. If you've been paying any attention at all to Twitch lately, you might have asked yourself, why are so many people playing old school RuneScape? <laughs> bro, holy man. Holy bro, there's no way, bro. I thought I lost. I'm dipping, bro. This is a 20 year old MMO and it's one of the most popular games on the internet for some reason. It's pulling in thousands of viewers on a daily basis. And most of them aren't watching for the riveting gameplay. Uh, 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 I only do it off stream. Sorry, sorry. Oh shit. But RuneScape has a sequel. RuneScape 3 may be eight years old, but it's a lot more recent and way less ugly than the game you see online all the time. So how did a 20 year old MMO outlive its own sequel and become one of the pillars of Twitch? Simple, its developers nearly killed their own game. In the early to mid 2000s, RuneScape was one of the most popular MMORPGs in the world. But despite, or maybe because of its immense popularity, bots and gold farmers ran rampant over RuneScape back then. A bot is a program that a player would use to run their RuneScape character for them. So when they're away from their computer at work or at college, the bot can gather gold for them or fish for them or fight monsters for them. All sorts of simplistic activities that the player would normally be doing themselves. They were in every world, stealing gold and resources from people who were just trying to play the game. But according to RuneScape's developer Jagex, that wasn't the only problem that the game had. See, it turns out that RuneScape had a seedy underbelly of illegal fraudsters. Really disturbingly for us, we discovered that there was all sorts of links between gold farming and kind of other illegal activities and really quite dodgy parts of you know, business going all over the world. And we were really, really fundamentally committed to stopping it from happening in our game. All right, before we go any further, I should explain a few things. The Wilderness was a PvP area in RuneScape back then. It was a place where players could go in to fight against other players, and the winner in those fights would take gold and loot off the corpses they killed. The issue is that some players went into the Wilderness and died on purpose to transfer their items to other players. Here's how it worked. Players would buy gold or items on shady third-party websites, and then a gold farmer would get those items, walk into the wilderness, and get themselves killed so the buyer could get their goods. But gold farming and botting got so out of hand that in 2007, Jagex removed PvP combat from the wilderness and restricted it to mini-games like Bounty Hunter and Clan Wars. Before the changes, the wilderness was one of the most popular places in Gilinor, but afterwards, it was barren. See, Jagex was trying to get rid of gold farming and botting, but what they really did was kill PvP. And the players were not happy. And then, just one month later, Jagex launched the Unbalanced Trade Removal Update. Players now had a trade limit of 10,000 coins every 15 minutes, while members had a maximum trade limit of 60,000 coins. Jagex was trying to combat scammers, but their decision had unintended consequences. Free trade had basically been removed from the game entirely, and longtime fans like RuneScape YouTuber ChemQ felt betrayed. So I had been PKing for a few months right before the free trade removal update had been implemented. And I just remember waking up immediately trying to rush towards Edgeville Wilderness Ditch and nobody was there. It was completely empty. Players were so pissed off about all this that they rioted in Falador Square for an entire week, begging Jagex to revert the changes. The pay to PK riot, also known as the free trade riot, ultimately resulted in roughly 40,000 canceled memberships, which translates to a little over 200,000 USD a month. And for Jagex, that was a huge problem. See, you could always play RuneScape for free, but most players choose to pay for a membership to unlock most of the game's content. And back then, Jagex made most of their money from memberships. They'd promised their community they would never rely on microtransactions. They, Jagex probably lost a lot more money because of people quitting the game. Like if you ask anyone who plays RuneScape nowadays, um, I think a lot of them have a very similar story where they played as kids and then stopped playing at the end of 2007. And then they found old school later on and now they play old school. A few years later in 2012, Jagex was facing real financial trouble. So they caved. They added microtransactions to RuneScape. 
Players could use real money to buy cosmetics and other benefits, but longtime fans were worried. After all, this was exactly what Jagex promised they would never do. And then there was the infamous squeal of fortune. At the time, so it's like, it was like a little like scroll bar that would go across the screen and land on the random thing on there. And there's like the mega rare, like in the middle, that was like some rare weapon or like 200 million GP or something. At the time, as a kid, being the young, naive kid I was, I didn't understand that it was like weighted differently. I thought, oh, there's like a one in 10 chance to roll that mega rare when in reality it's probably one in like, I don't know, a thousand or something. But just from what it looked on the screen, it's like, oh dang, I was so close to hitting that. Players could be awarded weapons, armor, XP, lamps, coins, and more, but it wasn't what they wanted. The gambling devalued the hard work that players put in grinding out for their content. It may not be popular, but it was very necessary for you know, the, fundamentally the financial viability of Jagex. It's, uh, people may not think that's important, but if Jagex is not around, RuneScape's not around. It's as simple as that. More and more players were leaving the game en masse, and Jagex knew they had to do something to stop the bleeding. Jagex made a last ditch effort to bring RuneScape into the modern age with the 2012 Evolution of Combat update, but the fans hated it. It seemed like Jagex had put the final nail in the coffin for their own game. But then there was a petition, spearheaded by RuneScape YouTuber So Wrecked, that made them reconsider their next move. So it re-engaged with the community, but it was really clear that they wanted one thing, which was an old version of RuneScape. And we didn't know if this was even possible, but we felt that we had to do it because we had this huge community that was still enjoying the game, but we knew there was this old, lapsed audience that had left that we could win back if we were able to provide them with an old version. Okay, so this next part is going to sound crazy, but it's actually true. Someone found an old hard drive in the back of a safe in the Jagex offices that somehow had a build of RuneScape from August 2007 still saved onto it. The developers once again reached out to their fans, asking if they'd be interested in old school servers. The response to the poll was overwhelming support. Players were excited, and on February 22nd, 2013, old school RuneScape was officially released to the public. Nearly 40,000 players joined Old School RuneScape in the first month it was out. And sure, that number dropped over time as the hype wore off, but old fans returned to the game of their childhood. And in March 2016, Old School RuneScape's player numbers surpassed RuneScape 3's for the first time ever. And I don't think they ever really planned for the game to uh, like actually be big or even grow bigger than RuneScape 3, which I believe it is now. With the release of a mobile version of the game in October 2017, the player base jumped from 58,000 players to nearly 100,000 in the span of just one month. And in March of 2020, Old School RuneScape hit its current record of 113,000 players. Uh, you know, now we see numbers so much higher than that. You know, at, at the time I wasn't even looking at views didn't even care for it at all, but now that I make YouTube videos myself, I can see that people in RuneScape these days get 300,000, 400,000, 500,000, even up to millions of views on RuneScape videos now. And it's crazy to think the amount of growth that we've had since Old School came back to us. RuneScape was nearly at the brink of extinction, but by listening to their fans and admitting their mistakes, the developers were able to bring it back to life. These days, Jagex even does weekly podcasts and regular polls that allow players to vote on new content and the overall direction of the game. This relationship between the developers and the players is what's kept Old School RuneScape alive for so long, and why it's so damn popular on Twitch these days. And that's why this 20-year-old game continues to thrive. Dumb decisions, an old hard drive, and a legion of dedicated fans who just can't get enough. We, we were in our middle school computer lab and everybody played, there were only two games you played in that middle school computer lab. You played Age of Empires 2 or you played RuneScape. And I played Age of Empires 2, but my friends all played RuneScape. And they were like, you should play RuneScape with us. So I did. And then I immediately got all my shit taken from me. Instantly. Like, all, I don't know what happened. I don't remember. I just remember like, we were like playing and then I got killed and then I didn't have any stuff anymore. And now there was a coin rolling across the floor that probably sounded horrible on the microphone. 